I thought it would be. What, two years ago? Been to prison? Yeah, yeah. No, I haven't been to prison. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you've been doing MFA teaching? Yeah. I mean, I teach in Lee's in Lee's program. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. We, we've that, like I've been doing that for a while. Okay. Um, but I'm also teaching in this low residency. Okay. MFA that Ben Nugent runs, the Mountain View. Okay. Uh, program based out of New Hampshire, which is really. Oh fun. wow. Uh, and so like, we go up there like twice a year, uh, and but mostly it's like remote. And okay. So I have like all these students that I'm a mentor for. So you've been teaching for for a minute yeah i mean i've been teaching like since i like lee and i taught at this community college in virginia okay like, he got me that gig and so we were like really in the trenches um and that the prison gig was like kind of part of that community college system got you got um, you I, yeah i, I was w- w- wigging out last night because i was finishing the mary mccarthy book mm. and then i was almost done going through um, uh, cool for America, and then I was just running. Run, I think someone stole my early work, <laughs> but I, but that's actually a testament to how good it is because that means. And I now I vaguely remember a couple weeks ago I was reading parts of it to somebody, and then I think they and then I remember being like, no, I think I'm gonna part of him. Like, don't take it, but I think they took it. <laughs> so I do, but I rem, I remember that makes me really happy. No, I, it's, it's actually true. the best. Comp- it's absolutely true. I'm gonna. Email. Like when you're in the bookstores and they uh, they keep like the Bukowski and the Kerouac like behind the counter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. People are stealing exactly, them too much. Exactly. Or it's like how I, yeah, I never have a copy of Sarah book because I I give it to you know what I mean. Like yeah, that's funny. I was gassing it to somebody, so I didn't have that one. But um, no, for a while that was true because um, those Renata Adler books were were like really hard to find, oh. and so I would buy like anytime I saw a used copy of Speedboat or. Yeah. Uh, whatever the other one is, um, After Dark, I can't remember what it's called. I would just like give them to people. I was like, you gotta read this. You gotta read this. And you like Speedboat? Oh, I love it. Man, so how? Did, what? What? Yeah. So I guess are we are we live? Yeah, we're we're going. <laughs> um, just same as normal. Just don't say anything like personal, right? Great. Um, but yeah, here with uh, Andrew Martin, uh, the legend. <laughs> uh, author of early work and cool for America. That's it. That's it. That's the only thing. Like, we just have to establish that there's a third, third thing. Um, but how did? Yeah, and the idea was. So yeah, I saw you write the thing at the end of the year, last year, recommending mm-hmm. books, and you were recommending the Mary, Mary McCarthy book. And um, I guess for my own reasons, I had yeah. I just is one of those things that uh, I'd wanted to. I'd had for a long time, and I. I wanted to read and um i was just cu- curious about what how you for like what 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 you liked about it or what or what you uh yeah what was your history with that book i had i had always meant i i really liked her criticism okay and i and i always assumed i would love the group because it just seems like the kind of book i'd be excited about um but i still i still haven't read the group um I don't know. I'm like waiting, waiting for the moment or something. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, somebody meant, you know, it, it, it's like I feel like she comes up, you know, yeah. and I like she came up in some essay or some article by somebody. And I was like, all right, I got to yeah. finally like yeah. read Mary McCarthy's fiction. Yeah. Um, and so I got that Library of America edition out of the library. And I was like, oh, I'll start at the beginning, start with the first book. Yeah. And I was just kind of shocked by how contemporary the voice felt yeah. and how intelligent and analytical it was and uh and then all I mean I happened I was like at year like three or four of like trying to write this book that's kind of a short story collection and kind of a novel and kind of trying to like thread the needle and like I discovered that book and I was like oh my god here's like the person who like really figured it out while you're reading cool for america or the one you're working on now no the one i'm working on now okay um i guess right i had been thinking in those terms with that earlier book too to some extent but this one i feel like the company she keeps is way more focused and it's actually about this one or it's like about like the the company she keeps (laughs) about this one character refracted through all these men mostly Um, exactly and it just felt like oh you can 
I mean, A, I feel like when I read older books, it's always like, oh, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. Like, and there's a lot of silly rules and like commercial ideas put on what books are supposed to do now categorically. And then you read old books that just do whatever. And it's like, yeah, it's a novel. Deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's definitely that, but it's also, yeah, it's similar to your. Because like here's one way I was thinking about it, where it's like I feel like with your books, and I think with what I'm interested in doing is like describing on, on some baseline level, like a lot of your stories have some element of. Did someone say like you were like male Sally Rooney? Yeah, someone said that, yeah. and everyone's always trying to say that I'm like this, like toxic mask, whatever they say about me, and I'm like, no, I'm male Sally Rooney. But the point I'm trying to make by that is. I'm concerned with like and things I like to read and things is like just like in any type of intimate encounter. It, yeah. it doesn't have to be explicitly whatever, you know, just sexual, whatever, any kind of intimate encounter um, and the nuances of what's going on and the, you know, different feelings, and the, you know, whatever, just the nuances of what you can say, what you can't communicate, what you can't communicate. Yeah. I feel like that's what you're, you're concerned with in your story. That's why you're, and that's why it's, I, I think you're right. Your writing is so readable and you're doing the same thing. And it's almost like how much, how, how precisely can you describe those encounters and how nuanced and deep can you go in like whatever weird gaps are in between people. And I feel like Mary McCarthy takes that to like such a precise level and yeah. such almost a terrifying level Yeah, where like the, the level changes, of judgment is the level really of judgment, intense. self judgment, other ju or like, like like the Brooks Brothers story suit story it's like yeah. the you know so first I was like okay this is going to be my way to understand like you know a, a woman doing this and but but you know in this and I'm going to understand about um you know I'm going to learn something about how women operate in this but um these type of you know writing in this way but if anything, some of the stories just left me more mystified or more terrified by like how quickly <laughs> sometimes superficial the intentions are for engaging in an intimate encounter and sometimes how quickly they can change yeah that's the thing i mean <laughs> even from that like the very first story in there where like everything is capitalized and like almost the whole thing is like found it's like in quotes it's like received language it's like yeah. her her level of self-consciousness right. of the degree to which she's like enacting certain cliches of yeah. of sex or of hookups or of like um romance in various ways it is like or marriage or divorce right. it, it that's what makes it feel so contemporary to me is like the degree to which she's conscious of like how familiar some of these things are and like that's part of her experience of that romantic encounter is like realizing she's like enacting these like sort of romantic cliches but then also fighting against them and then right. finding herself like yeah, the Brooks Brothers story, she she changes almost every hour her feelings about this guy. <laughs> like, they're on this train together, and she goes back and forth on right. whether she thinks he's, like, a total joke and loser or whether she's attracted to him or not. Oh, my God. my fav Yeah, my favorite part of that story. Well, before I say my favorite part of that story, when, you, when you're saying, like, cliches, you mean kind of like the the archetype she's playing with? Like, yeah, like she's yeah. in this... Like, in the first one, it's just about an affair, and she's with the... She has like a husband, the young he, man, the young man, capital Y, capital M. Yeah, yeah. And um, is that what you mean, kind of? Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. and just the like, it's it's all spoken of in that way. It's like there would have to be a talk, you right? Know, right, capital, right, capital, capital, yeah, talk, yeah. Um, and then there would have to be a scene. They would have to reconcile, right? Um, right. And so she's like so aware that she's going through. It felt like kind of like Madame Bovary or something, you know, yeah. where it's like always aware of the ways in which this is like part of a script almost. Yeah. I think aware, I think I think that gave it the depth was like an awareness of like the, poli the, the social implications of what she's doing and, yeah. and a level of like uh, an understanding of like, you know, the man in the Brooks brothers suit, like, yeah, she, and she's really explicit about that stuff. She'd be like, you know, I don't know. He wasn't attractive. He was this older man. It's like, it wasn't because he had money. It seemed like he had money. And then in parentheses, he's like, 
well, not only, not <laughs> not only because it's, you know she's like, <laughs> well, she's horrified when he says like as a joke that he's a traveling salesman. She's like, oh my god, no! And he's right. like, oh, he's in steel, which is like politically disgusting, but at least like socially makes him like someone she's not repulsed by. <laughs> right, right, right. See, that's the thing. I have no level of awareness, or maybe you know, I feel like I don't have that awareness of like the social tears and the implications of it. And when she's bringing that in, and then tying it to the political stuff that's going on. Well, and she's the like time. the bohemian. Exactly. So it, she <laughs> thinks of herself as a bohemian. Yeah, exactly. Because she's part of the like, you know, she's part of the little magazine circle of right. the '40s. You know, she's the the of the N plus one of of, of, of its was, day. That story was so good too. <laughs> yeah. The magazine, the mag. She. It feels like wildly just like the moment we're in. Like it's crazy. So that, yeah. So that story. That story is. Is called a uh, portrait of so yeah every story is just basically a different encounter with a different man told from a different angle yeah sometimes where yeah. and that story she starts from his perspective and there's yeah but portrait of the intellectual or something yeah the portrait of the, yeah and uh yeah what's that magazine is that partisan review that they're working at i think, I think so it's the partisan review. yeah and then he like ends up at life basically i think right you know, okay. when, when okay. he sort of gives up yeah, yeah. Oh, it was life yeah he, yeah she's called it the liberal or something like that she yeah. called the partisan review the liberals yeah the partisan review i think yeah i want do you think it's yeah i wonder if like was that now everything that i'm reading was getting mixed up in my head i wonder if you said something like that in this book um, I mean, it was so funny because I, I felt like reading that book, not it to toot my own horn in any way, but like it just felt like a kindred spirit because I was like, I can't believe I haven't read this because I felt like I was like ripping well, it off. When I read both of your books <laughs> in pretty quick succession last last fall, probably or last summer into the fall. Um, um, yeah, I was thinking of the archetype of the Leslie character. Mm. And the archetype of like the, yeah, I mean, kind of like the Margaret, kind of like a Margaret Sanger character who's like yeah. sort of, um, really cares, yeah, kind of really, kind of, kind of running into different relationships and and to escape something, but and but is also kind of like weirdly a guy's guy at some some points, but yeah, but then kind of. Um, I mean, I think the the thing that, that I always like. What's the name of that archetype? <laughs> well, I think the thing I have feared about Leslie, and like, I feel like she's like a, the a, the character who haunts me most out in the world, or something. Is like, I feel like at at worst, she becomes like the the cool girl, right? You know, the, from the from the Gone Girl rant, where she's like mm -hmm. sort of a, a male fantasy or something. But I I feel like. I gave her so many of my own qualities as a person and thoughts and feelings that I feel like whatever she is, she's, you know, like, like Flaubert again, like she's me. Right, so right, 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 right. I don't know, whatever those good and bad qualities are, I feel like, uh, that's, that's part of it. But also she's uh, a version of so many of the like, you know, like brilliant women I've known, especially in like the, the New York world who are, writers and also right. like kind of just like crashing through the world in ways right. that I like deeply admire. <laughs> right, right, right. But possibly yeah. I mean I think I think it's I think with the end of the Mary McCarthy book in that last like it's also like so and I think I think that stuff was really wasn't it, I, I'm pretty sure that was pretty scandalous like describing being on a train meeting a man having casual sex on the tr on the train I think that story was like a was, was complete, like a lightning rod it was, was like a yeah. really big deal yeah and then and but then at the end she kind of goes full um therapist mode mm -hmm. yeah 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 and it's just like analyzing herself um did you feel like it? Did you feel like it was that with with the Leslie character? So yeah, in in er, in in early work, it's it's uh, dude. So how did I, I'm so mad I don't have the damn copy because I remember <laughs> I was reading I was reading yeah when I was reading early work I was like yeah I, I, I want to ask you a question but I, I feel like I should wait a little bit longer so then maybe I can clip it and put it after the paywall because it might be a little inflammatory I don't want <laughs> oh, to I don't want to bring it now, but, that's exciting okay but do you th <laughs> do you think the reason why you're writing because like you're okay you're writing within five pages of early work there's like uh there's like a new like illicit 
love interest mm-hmm. that's introduced and how and just combine that aspect combined with with the um oh i remember what the line was from it was from an essay that someone just sent me um but um combined with you know combined with how funny it is and how good the pacing is it's like you're kind of in i'm my brain's kind of in mm-hmm. you know and and all these are are these kind of illicit or slightly secret um affairs do you think there's something about the br- what's happening in the like brain that ma- of what makes fiction good fiction good because it's, it's kind of a you know it's kind of a secret thing you're like reading into the the person's br- the author's brain yeah, right? yeah that somehow mirrors like the what would be i don't know the it's similar to like uh an illicit communication or illicit do you think there's some to that yeah like the excitement of of like finding out something you're not supposed to know or of, or of like seeing or this, something right i mean yeah it's, it's it, it sounds a little like romantic or high-minded to be like well a good book should be like an affair like you know you, <laughs> like you, you never know i like my women like a, you know what yeah. um but but like maybe there is something to that right where you like you're, you're like encountering a new thing a new person and you're like hoping that they'll you know bring something exciting that you haven't seen before but you're also confiding in like it's like you're feeling you're being confided to. this is just my yeah this yeah. is my theory to justify my like unhinged writing Deep, deeply confessional yeah, writing deeply <laughs> confessional uh, trauma imposing writing so maybe that's not right but okay you know you don't, if it's i mean if it's completely abrasive it's not going to be good but, right but some of that I, I wonder if i think so i mean i feel like with early work especially um i mean it was a much longer book but it always started the the goal was always for it to be like a kind of like built for speed kind of book like yeah. that, that just like you're in it and I sort of found that voice and I wrote the first draft like pretty fast and it was like oh I got this voice you? um late 20s um I think it was published when I was like 31 32 so I probably started writing it a few years before that um but I feel like it was like tr- after years of like writing stories and like pieces of novels that I couldn't figure out like that one I was like kind of fast kind of like brought like everything yeah. I was like I'm just gonna write like everything I know about being like an idiot in your 20s basically yeah. Yeah. And I'm gonna like just like try to like get it down and so like the original draft was like thousands and thousands and thousands of words longer with like way more like episodes of and but they got repetitive you know it's like they drink too much they do this they do yeah, that they, like yeah, and so I kind of like much. reduced it to like the 10 most important times yeah. that that happened yeah because <laughs> yeah. what else happens in your 20s I don't yeah. know yeah <laughs> no yeah <laughs> But yeah, but okay, whatever. Forget forget what's 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 inflammatory or not. Um, <laughs> but, but because I mean, it's not just that. It's not just that. Uh, you know, then you know you admire um, Leslie or your promote. You know, like that's how early work is, right? It's like a, it's like a, a little bit of an, aff- uh, an affair, and it's a lot of. It's just like it's just it's like. You want to have a drink? You want to have a smoke? You want to go out get, do this? Yeah, let's do that. Let's you know, kind of saying yes, saying doing everything, you know, going yeah, with everything. That's yeah. kind of how, um, you know, Mary, the, you know, Mary McCarthy is too. Mary no, Sanger true. is right. She's always like, down. She's always down, and yeah. but she, you know, what she, yeah. But then at the end, obviously, she start, there's some gnarly scenes about her, you know, her dad because she was also an orphan, right? Both of her parents died in the pandemic. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a crazy thing. Yeah, um, and then. I don't know. Okay, or so, I'm nodding, but I actually don't. I I forget her biography. Yeah, but, if that, but I believe it. If it's yeah, true. <laughs> both of her both of her parents died, and so then she was raised by her her grandparents, and then she went to this one's uh, Memories of a Catholic Girlhood. I know. I've been Laura, my wife, loves that book, and I've been dying to read it. Yeah, I just read the uh, read the the intro to it like a million times because <laughs> it's it's so it's so cra- it's the most crazy like auto fiction statement. It's like literally just a, a statement of autofiction. Like, <laughs> like, listen, like this is like this is obviously my life, but also I couldn't remember everything that happened. So if I'm at the school and they're like, you know, the the nuns are talking about this, it's not like it actually they were actually <laughs> saying that. I can't remember, but it seemed like a good thing. And then she's like, everyone keeps questioning whether I had a Jewish grandmother. They think it's fiction just because I'm a fiction writer. I did have a Jewish grandmother. <laughs> it's so crazy. It's so crazy. I love and the introduction I'd forgotten the introduction to the company she keeps until I just read it that like opening page that's like 
well, like some may note that the character is a little bit different in each of these stories, but like, you know what? That's just kind of the way it is sometimes. <laughs> and you're like, okay. I don't think I had that in my version. That's hilarious. It's like this one page sort of Yeah, I never had that. thing that that's like and sometimes one is an I and sometimes one is a you and so, yeah, sometimes yeah. one is a she and like you know that's just <laughs> that's just how it is. Uh and you're like, all right, like don't worry about it. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> don't Mary. Worry about it. Thanks, Mary. You're good. <laughs> but like it does feel like there there's this I mean, because it's like maybe uh, it was a relatively new form, or at least formally it was odd. There's this interesting need to like justify it. Yeah, um, yeah. And it sounds like that's kind of the case in the memoirs of a Catholic girlhood too. Yeah, but I guess I guess I don't know. When I when I was reading when I was reading your books, I was kind of like, oh, this is this is similar, like to my writing in some ways, where I'm like looking at these like relationships, and I'm kind of, you know, you're like being yeah the narrative is like being you know bad or whatever but then kind of self-effacing and kind of yeah. toggling and you know but then i'm just like but then at the end like you know he, yeah he like leaves his yeah oh man i feel like at the end i felt like at the end of your more recent book cool for america where we returned to the, the leslie character and like it seemed like some kind of um kind of commentary c commentary on like just that kind of attitude of just like um you know we have so many choices and they're just keep keep picking new choices and like no one's ever going to question it because like you'll find you know everything's everything's all good and and then at the end like she just finds herself in this like harrowing <laughs> setting where she's some guy's like hey you want to go to a wedding and she's like sure go to a damn wedding i don't give a shit yeah. and then she gets all stoned and then it's like starts raining and then they're in a tent and then like the dude she came with is just like sleeping with them you know hippie girl and then he's just she's like in the there's nowhere to sleep and it's just like in the tent all this random guy she went to a wedding with is like and then you know, sleep, you know can you tell i lived in montana yeah <laughs> girls are like it's okay to be jealous you know and she's just like bro and then but it's just like yeah so many options you know so many options i don't know were you doing were you, were you doing some co commentary on on the on the the world today or <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i i feel like i worried almost with that story that there's like that it's like moralistic or something you know because it's sort of like now that you're saying it also like right there's like a sort of well beckian no. aspect of it <laughs> where it's I'm like saying. this like sort of like parable of what like saying. what it is to like go off and and be sexually free and then she's like kind of left <laughs> left like literally like soaking wet and humiliated that was exactly my thinking i was like andrew's been so nice for two bucks okay okay we got to be nice sometimes but come on bro and then at the end i was just like see this is this way yeah maybe Dude, that's kind of what mary maybe, mccarthy's doing to herself yeah, at the end. maybe maybe it's not gonna lead to happiness for leslie um i mean i'd like <laughs> i'd like to believe that it's just a i mean you know I, I guess like I'm of two minds and one is that with with both of those books I was it's, there's a very very deliberate attempt to avoid pathologizing her the or, yeah. or the characters in yeah. general with like like it, it has these like little backstory sections yeah. for Leslie but like I was adamant that they not be backstory sections that like reveal the trauma that made her who she is right, they're right. just like more information about what her life was like and how she became herself but like right. i'm just very wary of the the you know i mean everyone is now because it's been you know much discussed like the sort of trauma plot and right. um some books i really like do it they they like have these like backstory things that like I was like, oh, that's why he's so messed up. Right, like he was right. abused. Like got right. it. Um, which is true. Like people are abused. Um, this is interesting though. But but I but I felt like I I w wanted to resist that resist that narrative the, shorthand. Because knowing it, the key of what. Because I just feel like people are 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 more complicated than that. Yeah. And, um, but but are still you know like I'm like a damaged person, but I I like not nothing like. There wasn't like one thing, right. but like just like an, an accumulation of life experiences, like 
chip away at who you are and and i feel like that was more what i was trying to convey and not that there's always just like one particular secret that that sort of makes you who you are you know right i mean there's 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 you know maybe not completely pathologizing the character or pathologizing yourself Mm -hmm. although it's interesting with mary mccarthy because in the end of the book she's literally sitting in the therapist chair and like having this dialogue and going back to her like earliest memories of her like father like because she has yeah she she has the whole catholic thing and this simultaneous like orphanhood and which i i kind of relate to the the fleeing constantly into new things and trying to define yourself through other people yeah just also if i pathologize myself or just think of like a certain groundlessness um and i was raised catholic and so i blame that on most most things (laughs) right okay you were (laughs) yeah yeah okay interesting See, and I, I only like my my friendships are almost exclusively with like Catholics and Jews. I think because we like share a a sense of like guilt and and trauma. I think I could have <laughs> used a little more a little a little more guilt. Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to reinstill that into myself now. <laughs> I'm reading Mary McCarthy to try to try to get some of her. Because I think that is there is like this low key moralism in my writing that I don't intend because I think of myself as like some like pro pro libertinage you know but uh, but but like in reality I think like the Catholic stuff just like never goes away. <laughs> you, you think there is moralism in your like it, unintentional like okay. un- unconsciously the characters are always like feeling guilty about right, what right. they're doing and they're right. like there's always this sense that like they're bad behavior will like lead to some kind of punishment you went to catholic school too i mostly mostly did not mostly like just went to church and uh did like the sunday school kind of thing i got confirmed yeah um my uncle was a priest uh so my my father's side of the family was like very like they literally lived across the street from a church in like a massachusetts mill town and okay um they were like my grandmother was like a many times a week uh, churchgoer, like mm. that, that kind of old school Catholic stuff. Um, okay. but slowly drifted. And like, after I got confirmed as a teenager, that was probably like the peak yeah. of my Catholicism. And then I, I was, you know, taken into the, the wicked ways of the, of the, the, the secular <laughs> yeah. world <laughs> the and, secular and kind world. of left it behind. But like, it yeah. never really, never really leaves your bones. <laughs> were you, were you raised well, that's uh, religiously? Thing. I was raised re- kind of religiously. I go to Sunday school and got confirmed and stuff, but it was yeah. just through like, this kind of like Steiner, like non-denominational Christian community thing. Oh, interesting. So it was kind of like, what do they? What do you get confirmed in? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> like, what is the confirm? Like, it's not a Catholic confirmation. What is it? Uh, like, what do you? Crit- what do you say when you when you confirm? your belief it's like i don't even remember i believe in like general christianity (laughs) yeah i I believe in 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 the church of rudolf steiner no i don't know i don't know much about rudolf steiner that's interesting yeah not a lot of people do (laughs) although somebody yeah somebody recently somebody who i'm like they kind of know online or messaged me online he just wrote a long thing on steiner for like the gagosian or something oh interesting yeah i think i think i keep rambling about steiner i think it's on the pod it's gonna it's, it's, I'm, <laughs> I'm, infil- I'm, I'm i'm yeah infiltrating the you gotta culture. get on uh know your enemy or something and do like what's the, that the, you know that the, they do a podcast about like conservative thinkers through the ages is steiner conservative i don't know i mean, no, he's, he's not like, conservative it's just like a i don't know what he is <laughs> no he's like a. Yeah, he, yeah, he, my my theory is that, yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's going to sound like it's wild, but it's not wild. My, th- my theory is that Steiner and uh, Hitler, <laughs> listen, just hear me uh, out, yeah, yeah. we're both, we're both trying to figure out what to do after World War One, and they went in completely opposite directions, <laughs> where, where, where Hitler was like, take out everything that's not this, and Steiner was like, no, include everybody in everything. So it's sort of like a pan pan religious yeah, vision. Yeah, and also like with like, you know, people with like disabilities and yeah, except everybody can can learn and like improve themselves. But I think maybe sometimes like the self improvement can be read as like from recent Wikipedia readings as I like try to dissect <laughs> how I grew up. I don't need you know, I'm trying to understand my own wiring. You know, anytime you get into that kind of like then it can be seen a little like evoed, I guess. I don't know, mm, but I don't think it's intended like that. I think he was just, you know, coming up with new. But he also came up with biodynamic farming. 
So he's, that's cool. he's really about the, um, and, and a lot of weird architecture, many angles. I feel like that's the context in which I've heard of, heard of him. The, 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 the farming? The, the, the architecture. architecture. But I don't actually know. I really, I'm, I'm truly like flying blind. Yeah, yeah, I shouldn't, I, yeah, I should probably know more about him. So, so you have some of that. Yeah, yeah. What did you confirm? Um, <laughs> I know, because I was like, I, the, you know, I was. I got a Bible with my name engraved on it. I, you know, I was in the service. I, I was, dude, it was, I was 15. I was probably wearing like a triple XL, like Echo shirt. Just like, when's this? When's I've been this? to like three Protestant church services and I'm always like, what is, what goes on here? I don't understand. <laughs> like, you know, like if you're not doing the Catholic mass, like what is, why are we here? Uh, this is, yeah. This is, no, I think, yeah, like I said, like I said, I'm. I'm I'm imposing some Catholic guilt onto my writing of myself, but so she's kind of, she's kind of assessing herself like that, um, with her shame and her, 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 I guess, I guess it's just, you know, there's one thing to be like pathologizing the character, but then there's also on the flip hand, on the other side, there's also, uh, an attitude towards a type of whatever, um, well, Becky and endless choices and just kind of being like, and this is great, everybody. Right. Right. There's, there's a, you know, you don't have to be pathologizing, but you also don't have to be saying it, it feels right? hard. Right. I mean, like I for myself, for my own experience. <laughs> yeah. Well, right. If you're you're a human being and, and like you, you do learn that like certain experiences will will be harmful to you and right. hurt you and that like all all pleasure is not. Right. good <laughs> right. and like some things that that are pleasurable hurt other people you know like right. the, these are all like unless you're a sociopath you like come to understand these things and so there's like I think I like have trouble sometimes as a writer because I I want to create this like world in which like I feel like I, I'm noticing especially in this new book I'm writing like everyone yeah. is basically like bisexual like everyone Damn, like dude. everyone is like sort of can fall in love with with anyone okay. like there's like all this it's like a slightly utopian idea of like what life could be. And I think I'm like just imposing like a vision of like what would be good. Ver and then I'm like always like, well, but then it also has to be like psychologically true to what it's like to make choices and to hurt people and whatever. And so I feel like there's well, always this like back and forth between like trying to make work that feels like it's almost like creating a, a a world that's like more like the world that I <laughs> like would want to imagine we live in okay. versus like trying to depict the world as it okay. is, you know? Okay. So you've, okay. So yeah. So there's something in trying to make it more like the world you want it to be than just being like, and everyone hears the cold. Yeah. It's kind of like you're saying like everyone kind of yeah, has sex with each other, sort of like in the Aaron right. McCarthy book. It's like people meet each other right. and they're, and right. then they start hooking up, um, which, which happens in life. I've been told, but like not that, <laughs> not that often in my experience. Like there's like something a little bit theatrical about it. Uh, I think in, in my writing and in, and in most writing that deals with relationships, it's sort of like, makes things a little bit simpler than, right, than, it, than right. it is in real life. Um, well, it's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting because I, I, when I, 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 even rereading some of the stories, like I, I'm like, um, just the rate of like a laugh or uh, a really uh, just like syntactically pleasant or just like a really nice, just like enjoyable sentence. I'm like laughing and, and reading your book and just like having good feelings. Like I have, a, I have good feelings when I read through the stories, yes. you know, like people are making jokes. And then like, whereas I feel like I'm always like, all right, I'll give you some good feelings and then I'm going to, and this is the truth now. And I feel like there's a, there's a recurring thing in your books where like, I think one of the exes is all like writing these super violent stories that just like, like the truth, the past is violent. And like, I have to show you how violent it is. Yeah. And then she's like, well, maybe if it's so violent, why didn't you not go back there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or like the, you know, there's a Cormac, there's a blood Meridian riff in early, early, in, uh, early work where she's just, he's just, yeah, it's just like the gnarly shit. But uh, one of my friends was like, wait, do you actually think Cormac McCarthy is bad? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, you, no, the character thinks that. Like, right, I don't know. Right, Jury's right. out for me on Cormac McCarthy. Yeah. <laughs> but, but that's interesting. That's interesting. I wonder, I, I think I might, there might be something to that, but I also feel like well, uh, like but I, I feel like I got to, you know tell the kids what, what's what, what the world really is. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean it was funny. Like one of the only stories in the collection that was originally workshopped in my MFA program, and then it was like revised over like many years before I published it, um, 
is the Christopher kids story about the siblings who do coke together and like yeah. have this sort of like harrowing night out like at home. Yeah. Um, and my teacher, who's a, a really great short story writer named Kevin Canty. Yeah, um, that one's pretty harrowing. He, but he was like, you gotta kill the sister. Mm. Like, man, you're like, you're not being real. You gotta <laughs> kill the sister. <laughs> And Keep I was like, real, man. I know he's like, you got to go all the way. Keep and I was real, like, <laughs> and I was like, you know, I, I think this is like more about this the is about you bro. repetition and, and okay. the cycle, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. not really like about, and that's the day my sister died. Right, I mean, you right. know, like that's, it's, that's a story. Sure. But that's not really what that story was, but it took me years because originally it ended just like at the end of that night and that when they're in the hospital or something. And it took me years to write, like the coda to that story where like a year later she like shows up at his door and she's like a mess and exactly. clearly like strung out. Yeah. Um, because like that, and it turned out like oh, that's what the story is about is about right. the fact right. that this right. is just going to keep happening. Right. Um, and that to me, but it took me like, yeah, three years from when I wrote the first draft to like writing that coda that made it work. I think as and a he story. pours out the whiskey and he's like, yeah, it'd just be, it's just a gesture, but yeah, exactly. Still do it. Yeah. But I feel like that's that's the story that I don't know. I mean, I feel like it, yeah. when you look at the whole book, it ends up being like a lot about the ways that these things that are pleasurable, especially substances, like yeah. actually like do horrible things. Well, that's to, the thing. I mean, I, it, it can also yeah, exactly. It's a lot about uh, alcoholism. Yes. Yeah, but it's also um, it can also be a you know I'm saying you know like I I feel like just yeah, just like the laughter per per page rate is just very high, yes. just just from the dialogue. But I think it can also, and you know, I'm saying I have a good feeling, but it can also be like the to me the the harrowing harrowing coldness of the of the ending can be a good feeling too, even if not if it's not initially. I think it's just like the it's like uh the uh, excuse my language, but it's a, it's the scaring the hose vector. <laughs> where if please you go, explain if, this. if you go too far like you know <laughs> it's like you're scaring that you know if you go too far then it's not good anymore but if, you, if it's a little bit scary it can yeah. be good right that's the dream <laughs> please explain this shot no i, think no, I mean i i really loved a, the album i listened to maybe the most last year was the danny brown jpeg mafia stop scaring the hose album oh yeah there you go exactly. and i have to admit i was like it's a great phrase and i but yeah. now you've kind of explained to me what it, what it, what it actually means <laughs> yeah. i was just like it's just a great thing to yell yeah, that's true that's true i forgot that they called them that yeah legend the legend legend peggy dude that album um, is wild it's really bracing and ugly and I, yeah i, I got, really I, love it i i, I, J, I love jpeg mafia and I, I like danny brown a lot too i, I that was that's maybe scared me a little bit too much. that combination seems scary it's hard to listen to like you can you can do like two or three songs at a time and you're just like ah, and then you really need a break like yeah, it's yeah. it's really a lot of information yeah, it's a lot of, yeah, yeah. A, lot a lot of aggression of, a lot of aggression <laughs> but it's I, really fucking good yeah but you know if but you, no that's if right you get well, a little bit scared you know it can be some some cold some cold truths about the about you know how things could be can be calming as a reader I, I find but i'm i'm I, I feel like i right for better or worse i feel like one of my goals as a writer is is like a kind of elegance yes and, and so that's I, what i read that's what i read your books for i'm like all right write some nice and like write some nice or like write yeah but but i think but the, like, the downside of that is 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 like Right, like 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 our friend Lee Johnson. Like I think his book Nitro Mountain is like yeah. one of the best books of like the last decade. And why it's good is because he just goes as far as you can go into like the darkest, most horrible shit mm. imaginable. There's just like this, like literally, like a guy who's like huffing paint fumes, like you know, like with like taxidermy hanging off of his car, like God trying damn. to murder people. And you're just like, yeah. like this is like you know yeah. the stuff of true nightmares. And I. Uh, I I feel like I haven't quite gone there, and I, I'm not I'm not sure I can go there as a writer. Um, yeah, but yeah. I part of me wishes I I had a little more of that in me. Yeah, but, uh, or even if just to be like like in your work or other people who are writing stuff that is called more explicitly autofiction, like a willingness to like to be really ugly on the page, which right. I, which I do admire in, right. in writers, and I think it's something that uh requires you to to like 
put away your vanity a little bit. Right, um, right. You know? Well, it's interesting because, yeah, I think with uh, when when it's when there is a kind of, you know, theme or like a. Yeah, when the when the whole book is kind of trying making a statement of something like how my first book was, where, where it's like then it's sort of like the beats are there for you of like the self ugliness, mm -hmm. like kind of where it, there is a remove just because of the, what it's titled, you know, and it's like, I'm only, yeah. but then yeah. like when I, when I don't really have that kind of riff to lean on, then that's why like, like the challenge of really articulating the nuances of certain scenarios and all the sides of it is what I feel like Mary McCarthy does so, so well. Yeah. What, what, I mean, it's 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 crazy the degree to which she, when I was just rereading it on the train on the way here, just like the way she captures thought, like the the like sort of self negating yeah. way that people kind of think and bend back on themselves yeah. and think through things. Um, it's really amazing, and and I think it's very hard to actually do in a way that feels like you're showing revelation right. and moving forward and not just ruminating on the right, same stuff right, over right. and over again, which I think at, at like its worst, the depiction of thought is just like, cause obviously real thought is repetitive, but, but she kind of makes it new. Um, yeah. Each paragraph feels like it's like advancing some kind of sense of the character or, or within, or, the, within one, one sentence, like, yeah. like being, you know, kind of like repulsed by something and then, that makes it better <laughs> or something like right. she one line early on where she was like, yeah, she was like, it was just, yeah, the revulsion somehow made it more, she's talking about the affair, like made it more like, and then there's like this horrible, delightful. there's <laughs> these moments that are just devastating where she's like, and then there's like this like panic of being just a young couple trying to entertain themselves on a Saturday night. Um, yeah. Like just like the sort of like cold panic of boredom uh, of like yeah, exactly. realizing you've like made a mistake and like having to sort of justify it somehow by having fun. Um, right. That felt so real. Damn, <laughs> damn, damn. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have any. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, 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 and characters in this book are also just like always retreating into drink uh, right. as like as just like something to to push away whatever bad feelings they have or whatever they've just done. Um, there's ones where he's like, hey, take it like medicine, uh, yeah. Margie or Margaret or whatever. Uh, on, on, on the damn uh, train? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And you're no, just like, that oh, was, that boy. Was my, uh, that was, that, yeah, the, the emotional turns in that story. Like, they're just drinking, getting drunk. Then the, she wakes up and she realizes they slept together. She's like crying. She can't find her sock. And then they have a drink and they're happy again. And then out of nowhere, he's like, go take a bath. And she's moods all weird. And she's like, what? Like, okay. And then she goes and takes a bath. And while she's taking a bath, while she's taking a bath, there's one paragraph where she's having all these different feelings about what's going on, you know? And suddenly she's like, you know what? This is like a political thing. Like, he, he, uh, this is like capitalism. Like, he's capitalism. And I'm, and he's making me, and I was just like, bruh. It's scary. It's, it's, it's scary. It scared me. This book, this book is scary. Because she doesn't even know how she's feeling. And it's changing from minute to minute. And then she has parts where she's kind of saying, like, like, I didn't want to sleep with him. But then I, she's like, yeah, it's just man. But then, she's then like, it's like, I feel like the thing that, it. yeah, the cool thing about that story, too, is then the, like, kind of long coda right after they have their, like, kind of affair on the train he like kind of keeps courting her, but it gets more and more like half assed over yeah. the years. And he like shows up and like makes a pass at her and she has to like kind of fight him off. And it's like, even though she kind of thought about just giving in, I mean, it's, yeah. it's really, um, it's brutally honest, you know, um, it, it's, and the it fact that he gets honest. sort of more and more conservative towards her. And at the end, you know, after her father dies, he sends her this telegram like that was the most important relationship you'll ever have. And just like, you imagine like some like ex. I was like, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you don't know my father. Yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, yeah, a lot of father. Yeah, she's like, uh, yeah, she fought him off though she had an inclination to yield, if only to reestablish her ascendancy over him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. There was yeah. something I just read. Uh, I can't remember yeah, now. I was like, I'm always reading too many things at once. So there was something about how, like, forgiveness. It, it was actually this podcast about Guantanamo Bay that oh. just started 
happening on by the the serial people. Okay. Um, and there's like something about how one of the Guantanamo Bay um, prisoners has like sort of like made it his his like thing to like forgive the guards, and he's even like hung out with one of the guards, and he sort of has like a public platform all about forgiveness, and the the woman on the podcast says like, well, but the thing about forgiveness is it is a power move in a way because it's implying that like you have the power to forgive because someone has done something to you. Uh, And, and there's like almost something in that McCarthy line, right. About like, like she almost was like willing to let him do something terrible to her so that she could have the higher ground. Right. But Uh, don't you understand how, yeah. Which is which is devastating, right? Right, it's devastating. She doesn't do it, you know, right, but, but it crosses right. her mind, and it's interesting. Right, right. Yeah, she stifled her vanity to not get her. Yeah, damn. But yeah, man. No, it's, it's there's some weird weird uh, coincidences. And then she was also, I guess, she was also really good friends with uh, Hannah Arendt. Yeah, they have. Again, I, I'm always like reading things secondhand, but I read a great essay about their correspondence, and yeah. there's a whole book of their letters to yeah. each other. Tony Jett wrote a great um, essay about their their correspondence. Yeah. Um, damn. No, she's like. I mean, you, you can just like, and, and I think this is like something that you either like or you don't. Like, there is a there is a like her. It's very intellectual, the yeah. fiction, right? Like, it, it's more thought-based than feeling-based in a way, right? It's like everything, every emotion is, like, almost, like, essayized yeah, within yeah, the yeah, stories. Yeah. And I think that some people, I think, have found fault with her work in that it, that it's, like, can be. There's even, there's a collection in this Library of America that I haven't read yet called Cast a Cold Eye. And I was thinking about how that's surely like some self-referential thing that like she, she casts a cold eye over everything. Okay. And like there's a sense in which she, um, the critic or something, which I think she's an incredible critic. And I, I see it in some of my, like and I'm a critic and a lot of my writer friends are like critics and writers that like, it can be hard to like find the balance between one's like critical intellectual apparatus right, and like right. the thing that you need for fiction, which is like kind of stupider in a way. <laughs> yeah. What do you, how do you feel about uh, Faulkner? I mean, I I love his best stuff, but he's like not, he's not like one of my like yeah. deep all time guys. Yeah, I think maybe because, um, a I'm not a southerner. <laughs> maybe sure. that's part of it. Yeah. Um, but I also, uh, I mean, I find him very difficult, and yeah. and I think partly like most of the books that mean the most to me, this almost feels embarrassing to say, are are kind of about like their characters are more intellectual yeah and and like faulkner's people are are not intellectual right, except right. for poor quentin who i who i deeply relate to and yeah. love <laughs> I, was just, I was just uh yeah i was doing the the the, the easter weekend uh sound of the fury really read. <laughs> is that a thing <laughs> well it's, so it's set over easter weekend yeah you know? that's so it's amazing just like, but then are I you was, gonna write about that i should yeah i should there's but your was, next Paris review essay. But you know what's weird, true. But you know what's weird is uh, the Quentin chapter is like on uh, on Thursday, if you know the dates. That's Maundy Thursday. It's, on, it's Maundy Thursday from years before. And then if I was reading it, I realized that. And then I reread it, you know, and it's all the memory of Caddy and his sister and the thing that happened, you know. And I reread it through that angle. And I think, you know, I was in a pretty, uh, I was in a bit of a, you know, insane state when i was reading but i'm pretty sure everything checks out i'm pretty sure it's because there's the perfume stuff you know the mary magdalene stuff and it's the it's the honey I mean, anyway I, I wouldn't put it past him and then he at the end he yeah he dies at the end of it but um but it was interesting you're you're totally right like going back i was going back and forth between that and this and in a way they're similarly it's crazy that they're looking contemporaries. They're contemporaries. They, they feel like they're like writing in like different worlds. Right. But <laughs> even that section particularly is looking at this like uh, maybe it's pretty it's it's different, but it's, you know, there's some kind of like you know, illicit crossing, boundary crossing, you could say. Yeah. But it's just so everything is just so exactly that. Like it, belligerent in scene. Um and then yeah, the Mary McCarthy will a thing will happen and then she'll look at, you know, 
three sides of it in the most elegant way. But there's still, I think, because it's so surrounding those type and with and with your writing, no matter how, um, you know, clean it is, just language wise, it's it is always looking at um, kind of like emotional situation, you know, feeling situations. You gotta hope there's something. I mean, I feel like this stuff's not gonna work unless there's like something like real. That's how I feel at the bottom of it, you know. A fe- um, yeah, a feeling. Yeah. Because I mean, I, I can't even. I mean, I, I feel like most of the stuff that people really care about, I, I can't even think of one that I love that like doesn't have like something actually at its heart. I right. mean, I, I guess like, yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, there's there's critics I really love who you know who don't write fiction, but if the fiction's gonna work, it has to have some like true has to, core yeah. of something yeah hard and kind of dark and yeah um damn yeah i don't know you i don't know you're a catholic and I, well i i've i you know i've i've pushed it all away <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you pushed it all away. <laughs> I've, I've tried to tried to run away as, as far away from it as possible but you know i'm married to it to another catholic so okay. you know you can only do so much <laughs> you're always you're always drawn back <laughs> Um, yeah, did you, uh, did you, uh, I guess this was also, yeah, there's probably a, there was an autofiction element to the early, I guess it's, it's clearly, it's, it's clearly, how, how do you feel about that question of like, is anyone writing stuff that's not grounded in something or are you trying to look at, yeah, I don't know. That's actually, that's a dumb question. I don't want to. You, you want to do that? You want to open up the Pandora's go, box of there. autofiction? I don't want to go there. <laughs> I guess I was just, I guess it's like what you're saying. If there isn't a, if there isn't a core feeling, or I don't know, I guess, I mean. Well, like, right, is look, Mary look, McCarthy autofiction, you know? It's look, like, it, it's clearly like all, and, and people like sued her, I think, because like all these characters are, are real people. Like she just right. like took stuff straight out of her life. She changed nothing about the, like that the guy and the young intellectual i can't remember who he is but it's this just is like a, yeah it's just a guy like yeah, a guy that she gym. knew <laughs> yeah but see like but see this yeah no i was just yeah i i was just talking to some you know someone about uh this the other day and they're kind of like uh um if you're hearing this uh, i love you <laughs> but uh, he was like on uh you know i did like the auto fiction thing and now I want to write something that's completely not out of fiction. Um, like, and I was like, what do you mean? He's like, you know, like dates of when I did this and when I did that. And I'm like, well, that doesn't mean, no, it doesn't have to be like dates. Like on this day I did that <laughs> because like in portrait of an intellectual, the first like 15 pages are just about this guy, Jim, who works at a magazine and she's like painting this portrait portrait of this guy and, and the, 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 the nuances of the levels levels of liberalism at the time yeah right yeah. pre-world war ii and uh and then 15 pages in a new woman works at comes into the office to get a job there and her name's margaret yeah and you're like yeah, yeah. whoa <laughs> and 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 she's like uh and he 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 just gets married he's describing like her wife his wife and how people look at and then, and then the rest of it is just, and she's describing herself like, yeah. he, you know, he tries yeah. to rush into her at the end, and and she's like, she looked, she looked, uh, she looked just strained and just trying to be <laughs> kind to him. I know she's like, and, oh honey, yeah, <laughs> like the, the, you, me, like, like you quit, you shouldn't have quit for yeah, me, yeah, basically. yeah, yeah, no man, <laughs> but like just the, the, he thought he was doing like a Jerry Maguire, yeah, move, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, but I think like. I think what you're saying or like what, what that's making me think about is like I, I think that like the whole like the auto fiction debate, the only problem I have with it is that it is that it's limiting. Because like it's be, a name. Be, right, because it's like if you think like obviously you should draw on your experience of the world, but I think like this book is such a great example because oh, I see what you're saying. she does it from five different angles, six right. different angles right. and like and I was just talking to Laura the other day about like I'm trying to write a new book and I want the style to be like looser and more sort of modernist in a way like like to just do more with language and like to me almost the way to do that is to use stuff that's even more real because if I just if right. if, if the right. subject matter is known to me then I can play with the language uh, in ways that are 
um, then then like it almost like frees me to not worry about like what's gonna happen next okay, because yeah. I can like I know what happens like I'm writing about like a 13 year old who's like basically me and like right. his mother who's basically my mother and it's like right. I don't need to like make that much up but I can like within right. those consciousnesses play a lot more freely if I'm not as worried about like uh, is there gonna be a twist is you know oh, whatever right like, right because you know. right. the mining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, I mean, it's like something like like, like working on your piece about your walk across the country. Right. It's like, we're not changing what happened, but you're constantly like thinking about what angle you're taking on that experience. And that is the interesting part more than the thing itself. Like a lot of people have done road trips of various kinds. So the point isn't the subject matter so much as like what you're doing with it. But you're saying you want to go more kind of modernist or more... I just I, I feel that need like this new book that I'm almost finished with is like really I feel it feels to me like kind of a culmination of what I'm doing with the first two books. It's kind of like almost like the deluxe version of those two books where it's Whoa. like, I don't know, like two different couples and one single woman. And it's like showing how they get through like two and a half years of life, basically. Whoa. So it, it kind of feels like it's like early work plus cool for America or something. Nice. But I, and the style, I think, I mean, I think it's, you know, God willing, like an advance emotionally and artistically, but I also think it, I feel like I like need to like discover new modes. That's exactly you know? how I feel. And, yeah. and I, I feel like, and I feel like that's what's more, yeah, that's how I feel where it's like, yeah, the mode is the story. The mode, the mode is what makes it the story. Like, and if the if the if the style is interesting, it's literally irrelevant. What it's, I don't know. It, it's it's messed up because I wrote a thing that was like, I was like, it was like reverse auto fiction where it's like <laughs> pretending to be auto fiction, but it's like <laughs> I'm not going around the world, call, you know, viewing my or just telling one you know version of myself. That's so that's like the trick, but it's like no one got the trick. Everyone's like, right? Because it's like, oh, here's this date. I'm doing this on this day. Right. Right. But that isn't like even if you told the story of one day, you'd have to be so selective that you couldn't it wouldn't be the truth. Right. Right. Yeah. right. But. But I'm saying it's like and also it's fiction. It's presented. <laughs> it's presented like that. No, but I guess what, what I was going to say was like it, around. Yeah. Around the end, the, the, it just gets so so formally crazy where she's like in the. Um, yeah, it, it, she's. It, in the damn uh, therapist's office and then there's just these long yeah this book yeah she's doing I, I think I think I think there is I guess the, the, I think there is the reason why I was all you know triggered with how, how 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 nice you were and how great Leslie was in all the books is like I think there is a bit of a strain where there is no I mean, she is really self. She bears it all. Flagellating. Yeah, self-flagellating, right? Like, and, and it's not even like she's self-flagellating. I have it all figured out. Like, and let me show you. Like, it, it seems like she's really earnestly digging in, and like, you know, these memories of yeah, just with her, yeah, her father is, is young. You know, like she's like, I don't know. I feel like that's a that's a an important component for any person trying to write. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a, you know a little bit, you know. If if I, if yeah, I feel like it's a little bit unbalanced, or like I have to completely be so self-flagellating for anyone to accept the story. But then if there's sto- you know stories out there that are they're just yeah. like generally, they could be good, they could be bad, but there shouldn't be any like view of the world that everyone unanimously agrees is good, right? That's no, not, exactly. That's not. It doesn't make for good art either. I feel like. But like, I mean, it's funny because like like a, a good friend of mine just sent me his manuscript. He's like literally my, my one of my oldest friends, and so I was reading it, and it's like what's very funny about reading it is like. You know, like there's like a version of me that's a character. There's a version of my yeah. partner that's a character. There's like you know the main character is like a really ugly version of him. Mm. Um, and my like notes in the margins are like, oh, like I don't know, man. I don't know if you can like say that. Like that's really about like about him ho- or about you. Uh, no, about, about like him. him he, like the, the, the him characters. Yeah. Like some of his like comments about women and stuff are okay, just like yeah. really gross. And it's right. like, but that's how this character thinks about the world. And um, I think. 
I don't feel burned by it, but it's like the 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 two books I have in the world, um, you know, did get a lot of criticism. Both, I mean, not as much uh, from like legit critics, though occasionally, but often among like the like just regular readers that like the characters are unlikable, mm. that they're not nice, that they're, they're <laughs> that you hate them all, that like they're all too whatever, like that they're all assholes to each other, they're all overly intellectual and shitty to each other. And I was like, I thought I was like sort of like pulling my pulling, punches a little yeah, bit about these little people. Bit. It's like if you know the real versions of like the way that <laughs> the people in this world actually treat each other, man, like you got another thing coming. Like, I, you know, and so it's like, what do you there is like a bizarre thing at loose in the world about niceness and right. like wanting everyone to be nice. And uh, right. and, and I, it's like it's like what I don't like is that I can feel that a little bit's absorbed into me where like even when I'm reading stuff, I'm like flinching and like mm. worrying about like, like I'm worrying on behalf of my friend about how other people will see right. his like ugly character, even though I think that's like a very legitimate thing to do. And like part of life that should be depicted is like all the like ugly thoughts that particularly men in this case have, right. you know, when they're like walking through the world. Um, right. But like literally the first thing the guy in early work says is like, like most people, I'm not an asshole to most people I meet because I'm like trying to be part of like the mainstream of society. Right, and so that's right. like the hint that like you're not getting the whole truth, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. How does early work end again? I, I wanted to because so he leaves his, uh, his, long, his girlfriend and then goes and then she, Leslie go. Leslie gets with his friend, right? Well, there's like there's there's a lot of angst term? about whether or not they they did or not, but okay, but, but then eventually I feel like he and one final turn. Yeah, I well, so he find and, my book. It's, it's <laughs> took it, dude. Well, there's all these. I know who you, I know where you. I know who it is. The camera can't see it, but there's a lot of books in this room. There are, so it might be in one of these piles. No, it's. I went through. I I was going. I I, t I wasted. Yeah, I took a two. <laughs> Hard 90, just <laughs> going through everything. Hard 90. Yeah. Uh, well, so at the very end, I know this because I've just been adapting it into a script, so I've oh, read amazing. the book 20 times lately. Damn. Um, they decide, because they're bored, basically, that they'll go to Montana, okay. even though she didn't get the job she wanted there. And okay. so then, like, the last little section of the book is that, like, she's kind of, like, actually, like, disciplining herself and, like, writing her book in okay. Montana, and he's, like still out at the bars and and we kind of end on her like deciding not to go to the bar and staying home and like okay. write, writing her book okay um so it interesting kind of, interesting my whole so, idea was that she, it would be sort of like her her buildings roman in the end like not his right 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 okay no i remember i remember my whole face getting hot like right? i was like <laughs> wow you're gonna say this about society and then she's gonna just home like this like come on dude and then i remember it. i calmed down my like heart rate went and i was like all right you, that was that was really triggering me uh, <laughs> you're saying i shouldn't stay in the bar <laughs> yeah no i think no that end was the end was good i was like okay good okay good it's not um Okay, okay. Damn, now I forgot why I had so much significance, but I had some significance. <laughs> um, yeah, nice. So you, how's that going? You're doing, you're doing a script, movie script for it? Yeah, I, I co-wrote it with this director who, uh, who really likes the book, which was really fun. And uh, yeah, the like biz the most bizarre part of my life is that we wrote it, and there's a producer who wants to do it and i know that like you can't count on these people at all and so who knows if it'll ever happen but like um you know they're like sending it out to like famous actresses now nice. to like read it and be nice. like you know uh so who's gonna play leslie well that's that's the I, million I know dollar who, question i know who is who i always imagine some version of um it's it olivia wilder oh well that would be great i don't is know that who i'm thinking of i gotta look i'm pretty sure um, uh, who's gonna who's gonna play her? Uh, we sent this. We sent the script to Zendaya. <laughs> nice, <laughs> I'm not nice, even joking. Nice. Uh, that would be incredible. Um, I think like someone like Saoirse Ronan okay, yeah, would be would be great. Of. You know, she's always playing writers. Okay, nice. Um, I don't. I mean, I I just want someone who will get this project uh, funded and made. Nice. I mean, there's like they, it's like you know they they show. I mean, I have very little say in any of this, but like. Um, you know, the guy who's directing it, we're, we're like buds. So he like sends me all the like casting stuff and it's, you know, like the 
20, 30 of like the best actresses in the world, I'm like, any, any of them would be amazing. Like if yeah. any like amazing professional actor, I mean, my you know, would be, yeah. would be, would be incredible. Nice. I have, um, but I also like, I don't know. I feel like, I think we wrote a really good script, but I also know there's like at least a 60% chance the movie will just be really different and weird and you know, that it just like won't be what I imagined it would be. And I just, I think that's okay. The book is the book. Yeah. <laughs> if yeah. they ever make it, which you're is like, like a, <laughs> you like the character in the, uh, in the, the magazine story when he just starts writing for the magazine and he's like, he said, he says he's going to write his great book. And then he's just like, well, the Matt, the essays I wrote for time, I guess you're saying is life or is it life? <laughs> yeah. They weren't really my, my, my writing anymore. And that was okay. I mean, that's the great danger of all this stuff we have to do to, to make enough money to write our books. Right. And yeah. is that you waste your life writing stuff you don't care that much about. Do you feel like uh fatherhood is changing your writing? I mean, it's certainly making me uh, have to do more with less time, yeah. <laughs> which is which is not a bad thing, honestly. Um, I, think I, I think I need less time. Maybe you need, <laughs> maybe I, you need less I think time. I, I think I have too much time right now. No, I mean, you no, know, like, I, like I'm, I got, I'm getting less time for like the last six months. You know, I was like doing doing the baby stuff, working at the Paris Review, like trying to finish this novel, trying to write this screenplay, like teaching. It was like. But in a way, it's just like you kind of turn into a machine and you're just like, all right, I'm like going to like I've got an hour and I'm going to like write this fucking scene. Um, But uh, I don't know. I I do think it's made me. uh, It's given me perspective. Yeah, I think it's inevitable. And uh, like the the new book is like kind of about that. Like it's like most of it's about like couples like during like the kind of pandemic years for lack of a better word and like all their shit and their like hangups and whether to get married and what kind of sex they're having and who they want to be having sex with. Um, and then like there, eventually there's a baby involved and the character like kind of has this revelation that like, uh, a lot of this stuff didn't, didn't matter that much. But I think that's the kind of revelation that is, it's like an acid trip revelation where like, it fades away because <laughs> then you're back okay. to like wanting all the things you wanted before there was a baby. Like okay. you still, you still have the same relationship conflicts and desires and, and uh, you know, struggles. And like, he's in that like first glow after the baby. And I feel like I was there for like the first like six months. I was like, this is what my life was all leading up to was this. And like, this is my purpose in life. And I still like, I mean, I love this baby and he's like my favorite thing that's ever happened in the world. But like all the old stuff is still there. <laughs> I'm still me. I'm still like struggling with all the same stuff. Yeah. Um, and, but I think like subject matter wise as a writer, it's like, Oh, suddenly you have like access to like what your parents might've been thinking mm. <laughs> instead of like, you're no longer just able to like, for me, I've always only been able to inhabit like the kid right. perspective. And suddenly it's like, Oh, right. Like the person who's the person of responsibility. Inhabiting the father. Because yeah. Cause you yeah. got that father story. There is the one. Yeah. And, uh, which which took me a long long time to write. Yeah, some of the. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a funny ass story. He's, yeah, he's dating the older woman, all the mommy stuff in there had me dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you kind of are you kind of are a sex writer, I think. It's, you know, like it was funny. People I, think I'm a sex writer, but I'm actually an anti-sex writer. <laughs> That's what people don't it's not actually that much sex in your book. <laughs> there's barely, yeah, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of trying to, wishing, yeah, yeah, yeah or <laughs> deflecting, yeah. Well, I've always wanted to like. I feel like there's actually like kind of a, uh, um, what's the word? There's like some economic term for it. There, there's like there's like a market opening for for people to write honestly and interestingly about sex. I don't okay. think that many people do it, you know. Yeah, and and like I. I'm just so interested and I, and I think it's like a part like to, you know, if, if you're not being like overly not doing it to write it porny or something, right, but just right. to like try to like understand like what it is that goes on in people's lives. Yeah. And like, it's just part of part of it. Uh, yeah. The new book is pretty self sex obsessed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 the one that I'm, that I'm <laughs> readying for, for a publisher. Um, Okay, but the best story. Is, yeah, I mean, the, yeah. I guess it, what is it, the title story is so fun, so good, dude. 
did you, did that was you? the first story I ever published. It was cool for America. America. Yeah. What do you mean before early work? Yeah, I published that story in 2013 in the Paris Review. It was my first Damn. publication. Yeah. Did you blast your uh, tibula like that or no? <laughs> no, but a friend of mine did. Damn. Uh, I we were playing. That was in, in um, Prospect Park. Uh, we were playing soccer, and he. Damn. I, I saw it happen, and it was, like, one of the most Gnarly, <laughs> disturbing dude. things I've ever seen. <laughs> and he's still like, where's my royalties for that story? <laughs> like, you stole, my, you stole my trauma. That's hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. You stole my trauma. <laughs> Damn. No, it was, it was so horrible. <laughs> Damn. And I was, like, immediately took it. I was like, I'm, I'm taking that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's always, it's always a, yeah, damn. But you were saying, you were saying earlier, um, for my own you're saying there's some there's like a uh something about like the trauma plot being like tired or something like that what did you what, what did you mean by that i mean just feeling like i mean it, it is you know and peril segal wrote that essay about it in the new yorker oh, a couple she, years ago oh, she did? like yeah that was that was that's all i'm paraphrasing basically but and you know she uses as examples too like like literally every like shitty mainstream movie mm. is now like the backstory of like how someone became the villain or something. Mm. You know, it's like even things like, you know, there was like a movie about like how the villain from Sleeping Beauty became a evil witch or something. It's like we have to know like everybody's trauma, right, <laughs> and it's right, like that's like right, the only right, possible right. way we can like understand the stories of ourselves. And right. it's not that it's not often true, but um, it is it is limiting. Right. And, and I think it's like self-limiting. I mean, the, the the example that everyone always cites is that uh, Hana Yanagihara book, mm. the, A Little Life, which just is like endless, endless, like horrifying right. things. But she's, yeah, she's kind of explaining her characters. She's right. kind of like saying she she's like playing God, kind of. Yeah, but she's. I mean, like the whole book is like a the long explanation of like why jude is like unable to live okay. right i mean it's like because he was like first he was raped by this person right, and he right, was raped right. by the priests then he was thrown down the stairs right then he was right. whatever and so like as it's sort of like an accumulation of horrors almost making an argument for like why he should kill himself basically right right um, but i mean in, at the end at the end of but if you're doing it to yourself if you're searching for yourself it's kind of but i mean I mean, end. it's part of, like, the experience of being a therapized person, right, is that you're, like, inevitably, like, searching through your past for, like, what made you who you are. Um, I'm not saying it's not legitimate. Um, right, I right. just think there's, like, more and less elegant ways to do it. Right. And and we've, like, sort of settled lately at, for this, like, trope of, like, this particular thing caused this particular thing right, later, later right. in life which which i think is just over oversimplifying yeah you know? some time might pass and you know, it won't even be true anymore you what or or some time might pass and then that story like that story you wrote of your of your life is like not true anymore well that's the thing i mean that's that's like luckily hopefully why you get like a bunch of chances at it <laughs> like yeah. every book you write or every right. every piece you write you're like hopefully going a little deeper or figuring out who right. you are in that moment. Cause that's kind of what she says at the end of this, where she's kind of like, it seems like she says all this, stu says all this stuff. And then she's like, and that's why I don't know. There's some suicide stuff. Like that's why I should anyway. I mean, it reminds me a little bit of like, um, the golden notebook by Doris Lessing, which is one of my okay. favorite books. Okay. And, I mean, the, I feel like these are all books like under the shadow of psychoanalysis, you know, mm. where it's like trying to like figure out all the things that like make a person who they are. And that book is like very explicit about all these different like all these different lives the one woman has had and like who she is in all these different times and places of her life. And, you know, the idea is there's like there, she's got like, a red notebook, a black notebook, a green notebook for different phases of her life. And they all have like sort of different versions of her and then they all. They all come together in oh. the golden notebook, oh, okay. um, which is uh, you know a bit trite when I say it like that, but it really works as a book. <laughs> in the nice. book. <laughs> um, but I mean, it's I feel like that's like 
the really complex version of the trauma plot, which is like what you want from a novel is the, is the like something that makes you see the full breadth of what makes a person who they are like Proust or something, you right, know, or, right. or even, you know, canals guard where you're, you don't you maybe don't have to like say everything that ever happened to you, but like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. No, I find that's I found that 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 that's more interesting is like um, instead of like confessing the story, like proposing a bunch of different stories. Yeah, yeah. And that's also probably a, like a healthier way to go through the world if you like. I don't know if you have like one story you're sure of. Well, it seems it seems like it it can be a real trap. Um, it's kind of, yeah, or it's like, yeah, it's like saying everything's somebody else's fault. It's it, the the temptation is to say something's everybody else's fault or everything's your fault, and they're both equally myopic, kind of. Yeah, perhaps. And right, and they they neither like gives you much opportunity to to grow. Um, or, or, you know, you can choose one of those explanations, but then it's like, all right, well then now what yeah. you, you have to keep being a person, <laughs> you know, you have to like find a way to advance in the world, at least to stay alive if that's your goal. <laughs> right. Right. Um, yeah. No, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that she, that she, her child, her childhood was so gnarly like that makes it seem like, uh, yeah, I, I like that she exposes all the stuff about her childhood and stuff and like kind of pr- offers herself up as like a canvas of like how someone can understand something about the world. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I, I think it, I think the way that the book works, that it like shows you all these examples of how she's behaving first and then proffers possible explanations right, for, for right, how those right, things came right. about is way more interesting than the other way around. Um, you know, it almost goes backwards in a way. Um, I'm reading this really strange book that I love right now called Manhood by Michelle Lyris. And it's kind of like proto, proto Knausgaard or, I mean, he's like post Proust and pre Knausgaard. And it's like oh. this very like essayistic book where he's trying to like explore like what made him the man he is. Okay. And it's like a lot of analysis of like his like childhood memories and like, of like plays he saw as a child or like images he saw and like what those things meant to him um, and doing kind of like close readings of like almost like texts from his childhood. Um, It's a really cool book. Um, It's from a while ago. uh, Yeah, it was published in 1939. Okay. Um, But there was a Richard Howard translation in the seventies maybe. Um, And I'd been looking for it for a while because I read it. I read some of it like in a read a residency and I, I've been like looking for it ever since. And then they, I found it in unnameable books the other day. So Damn. really shout out to the greatest bookstore in Brooklyn. Damn. <laughs> Are you writing reviews of stuff or is that a thing you do consistently or like, I, I do it a lot yeah. and I, I feel like I've done it for years, but this is, did you write something about Bologna a while ago? Yeah. Okay. Um, he's one of my favorite writers ever. Nice. Um, nice. And that, yeah, it was a New York review piece where I, yeah. I had to read every Bologna book. You did? So. Dude, I, got, I think I, yeah, I think that was, yeah, th- I think that was back in the day when Harold was gassing your book to me, right when I moved to New York, and I was like doing the like, I was like, oh yeah, he's writing about the same thing I'm writing, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and I think I saw that you had written a blind thing. I was like, oh whatever. <laughs> so, I wrote about Zambra. I wrote about Eisenberg. I wrote about know. all all of our people. Yeah. Um, but um, nice. But this is like weirdly the like longest stretch I've maybe gone in like my adult life without doing much criticism yeah. uh, i think i think it's okay i think i need a little break you're tapping into your second phase yeah i'm doing the novelist mode well and i want to like i mean for so many years i did it because it was like a obviously is like a good chunk of money and b like you know like kind of wanting to stay in the game like you yeah. know I, I like criticism a lot but then at a certain point you're like pitching something that's going to take you like two months to write and it's like i'd rather I don't have infinite time. Like I used to have yeah. more time, and now I like I realized, you know, like between that story collection coming out and now, like mostly what I've published is criticism, um, which which I care about a lot. But I don't want that to be like the only thing I do. So. Yeah. Um, and you've been in New York for a minute. Yeah, we. Uh, I I started out. I went to Columbia, and then I lived here for years afterwards. But then. I was on like a tour of the country for 
a decade and I lived in Montana and yeah. Virginia and Boston and then uh Laura and I moved back to Brooklyn in twenty nineteen. Okay. And right uh before the pandemic. Yeah, she's a hospitalist and so uh yeah. she she we got here just in time for her to be like like the front line <laughs> like COVID ward <laughs> doctor Damn. and it was it was insane. Damn. <laughs> like she was running a a um hospice unit for covid patients she was running a long-term covid recovery ward Damn, like really? she yeah she was like really in the shit like as, as deep in it as you can get what were you doing i was i was hanging out at home <laughs> <laughs> i was walking the dog <laughs> yeah you're walking the dog i was reading, i was worrying i was praying yeah, reading all of Lanya. <laughs> going back to my catholic roots yeah damn dude <laughs> I was worrying because my book was supposed to come out. Well, uh, did, wasn't it, was it, didn't it come out in 2020? It came out in July 2020, and it was just like, Damn. It, it did not feel uh, like the most important thing in the world. Damn. <laughs> Much to my chagrin. Yeah, yeah, you're, <laughs> tell. It was, it was very sad. You know, that was the worst thing about the whole pandemic, I'd say, is that my book didn't get the yeah, attention it deserved. Thing, yeah, that was the worst thing. <laughs> Damn. Well, shoot. Um, I got a fucking pee so bad. Um, <laughs> Great. You wanna you wanna kill this? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, awesome. Don't don't you have to do an ad or something? Yeah, uh, no, I got I, I got to do a BetterHelp ad, or maybe maybe we got more in us, but uh, maybe not. I got I got I got a pee real quick.